Okay, we all know that HTTP is the protocol of choice that we use to surf the web. It's the language of love between web browser and web server. And we also know that when we go to a website and we type in HTTPS, it's secure. At least we think it is. What is that S, really? Before we dive right into HTTPS, we've got to understand its older brother, HTTP, the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. In short, this protocol is the language of love using a request response mechanism. Let me translate that into pure English, right? It's a stimulus response. Hey, I need this. Oh, you do? Here you go, right? This is what really defined the, the, the heart of the World Wide Web, and I'm really not happy with how those W's came out. They look like hearts for some reason. Um, but right, but one, one of the key points about uh, HTTP, that it is probably the most well-known port number in the world, it uses TCP port 80 and sends requests over those ports using the universal resource locator. So what, what, what that means is you open a web browser on your computer right here, pops up and you go, I want to go to www. let's just say uh, viado.com, right? You hit the enter key and it will send a request message saying, hello Viado, I would like to communicate with you. Could you please send me the images and the data that they that you have? That is formed in a URL. And I, I know, I know a lot of you are like, uh, duh, I know, I know this stuff. Yeah, I know. I, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page because it becomes so comfortable to open a web browser and type something into that bar, what is in that bar, whether it be just the website or all the extra stuff after it, comprises a URL. That is a request using HTTP. That request then goes to the server in a clear text and stateless way. Now, you know that HTTP runs on top of TCP. That means that there's still that session that's maintained using TCP, but the HTTP protocol itself doesn't do any checking. When it sends the URL request, it assumes the other side gets it, right? And the other side then responds and says, here you go, and assumes this side gets it. Now, TCP is underlying all the packet transfers, saying, okay, did you get that? Here's the, the SYN, the ACK, all of the stuff that TCP does. HTTP just rides on top of that in a totally stateless way. Now, I'm gonna put with exception, I'm not even gonna call it an exception, with other mechanisms to help with that. Like, we've all heard of cookies, right? Cookies are web servers' efforts to try and maintain some kind of state. Like, who is that person that went to our website? What did they do here? What did they search for? What did they request? You always wonder, when I go back to a website, how does it know that I last searched for that book or that device, right? It's because it's stored typically in a cookie uh, on your browser where it has a, a, a semblance of state. But that's not part of HTTP in itself. That's an add-on, right? So, so HTTP... Is, is really not the star of the show. It's SSL and TLS when it comes to security. And a lot of stuff here. So let me, let me first off bring it back uh, to the video for just a second. HTTP is great, right? It's, it's the stimulus response. I need this, you got that. I need this, you need that, right? Um, that, that's, that's what drives the protocol that drives a lot of our web browsing today, right? HTTPS isn't necessarily a protocol in itself. And that's why I say it's the re this, this is the real star of the show is SSL is because all of the future security topics that we talk about, I'm not going to say all of them, a lot of them, like when you see like FTPS, uh, IMAPS, uh, POP, you know, all of these secure protocols, SMTPS, like it's all the same stuff. It's using SSL, or I guess you could call it TLS. So let's start the conversation there. This is a big topic. That's, that's why, like, if you get it now, as we're talking about HTTP, like all the other stuff, oh, oh okay, it's just gonna use that. This is gonna, so, so that's why I, I added this title. I, did, I didn't call it HTTPS web surfing. I wanted this to stand out. So if anybody searches for this, they know exactly what, what the main topic is here, right? 
SSL was created by Netscape in the 1990s. They, they looked at HTTP and they're like, this works great, but we need it to be secure. So if somebody sniffs this data, it, you know, it's, it's scrambled, it's encrypted, right? So, so there was many versions of this. And I actually talked about this in a, in a previous video where I talked about, you know, there was the original SSL was kind of buggy. They fixed it in SSL 1.1 you know, 1 .1 or, or, or something of that effect. And then it jumped ship. They, they rebranded, they, they didn't redo. They rebranded SSL as TLS, Transport Layer Security. It's the same thing. It's just a new name that they use. And that's why you hear it used interchangeably. You'll see documents that say, oh yeah, that's using SSL, right? It's probably because HTTPS has an S. It's not HTTP. T, right? So, so everybody kind of says SSL, but they realize that when you're looking at the actual protocol standard today, we use TLS. And furthermore, we use one of the later versions of TLS uh, than the original ones that came out, right? So, so what, it, what it was, so it was rebranded as TLS, but it uses digital certificates from a trusted certificate authority and negotiates the encryption and hashing for the session. Okay, okay. This is where it gets good. And, and this is where I really, I mean, hang on, hang on. I need you. If you're, if you're distracted, if there's another browser, you're checking uh, the news or Twitter or something, stop, hang on, stop. Pay attention to this because it's huge. And if you get this, so many doors will open in the future as you're learning all the other security protocols, right? So You've got, so we just talked about this at the very beginning, you know, typical HTTP, this guy sends a request, this guy sends a response, done, right? It's all clear text, it's sessionless, stateless, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so what if we wanted to use HTTPS, which is really HTTP with SSL slash TLS on top of it, right? Well, the first thing that has to happen for that to, to even work at all is sometime in the past, it's not like, you know, when your web client goes, I mean, sometime long ago, before you get there, the web server, whoever runs that website, goes to a trusted certificate authority. What does that mean, trusted? It means there's not that many of them in the world, relatively speaking. VeriSign is the example I use all the time because they're one of the original. Trusted means that the people who create web browsers like Microsoft who creates Microsoft Edge or Google who creates Chrome or all the variants out there, all the people who create web browsers look at VeriSign and they say, yes, I trust certificates that are issued by that CA. That's what I mean by a trusted CA. That, let, me, let me do it on the flip side. That means you and I, if we're like, I wanna build a trusted CA, it's not so easy, right? We're not just, I mean, if, let, me, let me emphasize, anybody can create a CA. You can do it in a matter of minutes. It's, it's really easy using Linux or Windows. You can become a CA. But all of the web browsers of the world, please, hey, please, please get this, all of the web browsers of the world will hate you. They will reject you. And you've probably seen people that have created their own CA when you visit a website, and instead of seeing the website, you see blah, this website is not trusted, you know, and there's a variety of reasons you could get that message, but one of them is because it has a certificate from an untrusted CA. Some web browsers today won't even let the person go past that. Like, it'll say, no, you can't, unless they like, almost like hack the registry of the computer to try and get by that, that security vulnerability, right? So a trusted CA is a certificate authority, somebody who generates digital certificates, I'm gonna talk about what that is in a second, that all of the web browsers of the world trust. So, hang on, how do, how do they maintain that trust? I mean, how does VeriSign ensure that they, you know, they become and stay a trusted certificate generator? Well, one of the ways that they do that is they validate the identity. When you have this web server and you go and say, hey, I want a, I want a digital certificate that, that will encrypt data to, to viado.com, right? Um, then the, 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 the CA is gonna be like, well, prove that you own Viado. Give us a copy of your driver's license in, the, in America. You know, tell, tell, how, how can you prove that you own that domain? I mean, are you really Viado? Are, are you, like, they're gonna go do their due diligence and it behooves them because if they don't, if they're just like, yeah, and they start handing out certificates, then the web browsers, the people who make the web browsers be like, ah, oh, I'm not trusting that, you know, certificates from that anymore. So, right, so it, it's, it's, it, it works out. So this web 
presence. Let's again go with Viado, goes to certificate authority and says, I need a certificate. They get one because I validated my identity. Now, this web server will install that digital certificate. Now, there's all kinds of stuff on a digital certificate, but I've boiled it down to three major pieces. You have the identity, which is, this is who the website is. This is, here, let's just write it up here. This is viado.com, right? It'll be listed right there in the identity or whatever identity of that website is. And it says, this, this is actually known as a CA signature. This is the stamp of approval that this CA has, has genuinely authenticated or validated the identity of Viado, right? So, so that when, when this is sent to the web browser, it goes, oh, oh, okay, I trust that signature. I trust that CA. Now, I'm gonna talk more about that signature in just a second, but it cannot be faked. There's no, there's no fake signature. It doesn't work. Mathematically impossible or improbable, we'll, we'll say, right? So, so we'll come back to that in just a second. But the last thing, and, and probably the most significant thing for this discussion that's on that certificate is the public key. What that is, is half of an encryption formula. Anything that the public key encrypts cannot be decrypted any way except for the private key. Now, where's the private key? <laughs> I don't know. It's somewhere locked away on that web server. Under like, like when you install that certificate, the operating system stashes it away somewhere where you, you don't even know where it is, right? Because they realize if somebody gets that private key, which can happen, right? If somebody gets that private key, all the encryption's done. They've got the other half of the formula. But I want you to, to keep in mind, it is just half of the formula. Now, that, I'm sorry, that was all step one. We've got this certificate. Okay, so now let's let's get to some action, right? So this guy, the web client, goes to Viado. Man, I'm throwing my pens here. Uh, goes to Viado and says, I want to have, you know, get, give me your website. Give me an image. Give me whatever, right? Well, instead, if this is the first start of the session, Viado, instead of giving him the website, sends this certificate to the web client. And he goes, oh, okay, great. This is going to be a secure session. Immediately this client generates something called the session key. Now, this is the key that's actually used to encrypt all the data between these guys in the future. Whoa, 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 wait a sec, Jeremy. I thought you said the public key was half the encryption formula. <laughs> well, I did. Okay, well, well, how, how is this, this fitting into it? Well, let me, let me make sure you get another key term right here. This public key is actually part of something known as asymmetric. I'll abbreviate it because I can't, type and or type talk and write at the same time. It's asymmetric encryption. That means two keys used for every transaction, public and private, right? This key is known as symmetric encryption. One key can encrypt and one key can decrypt. So let's, let's just say I have the word cow, right? If I encrypt the word cow with that session key, well, that same session key can decrypt it, right? So it's, it's one key to rule them all. Whereas with asymmetric encryption, if I encrypt the word cow with the public key, the public key can't decrypt it. You have to have the private key to do it, right? Two key encryption. This is brutal on the processor of a device. This is much easier. Okay, so let's put the puzzle pieces together. We go to Viado, we get this digital certificate. This guy generates a session key that's very easy on the processor, not as strong as this, but strong enough, my, my goodness, for a simple exchange between these, these guys. Uh, I mean, you're talking encryption standards like AES uh, is used nowadays, and that's, that's one of the things that I'll come back to right here. SSL, I mean, SSL TLS itself isn't the, the, the symmetric encryption. I mean, this will get upgraded as time goes on. You know, better and better and better methods Will be, will be changed out. So you don't have to change the whole protocol just because you want to improve your encryption standard. <laughs> Do you get, you get the idea? There's so much to talk about in this. Okay, hang on, let's go back. So we go to here. It sends the digital, digital certificate. It generates the session key that'll be used to encrypt and decrypt, one key, right? It then uses the public key you guys know where this is going, right? It uses the public key, not, not, to, not to encrypt the communication, to encrypt the session key. Here's the problem. We have a public network, right? Anybody could be grabbing any of the data whatsoever on that network. So how do you 
do encryption. I mean, if you send encryption keys over that, then somebody potentially could do it, unless you send half the encryption key. You send half the encryption key to encrypt the encryption key. Ah! That encrypted session key then comes back over to the web server, and that's what they use to encrypt and decrypt their communication for the rest of that session. My friends, that is what we call HTTPS. That is what we call FTPS. That is what we call anything that uses SSL and TLS uses this method. And that's why I painstakingly spend so much time hitting that with you is because if you get that, and I only want to talk about it once because you can come back to this video a thousand times and know how that works, right? If you know how that works, you know how almost all the encryption works across public networks. That's how big this is, okay? So let me, let me make sure that, that I've hit the key points here. Web server sends the digital certificate, session key is generated, public key, oh, 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 I was gonna come back to this, right? Okay, okay. so public key is used to, to, to encrypt this, send this over, okay, okay. I mentioned at the, at the uh, when I talked about the certificate, I'm gonna come back and explain how this, how this, uh, this signature works. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, this is, this is not gonna be one of those like, like critical to the process things, but it's really good to know because it'll make a lot of other stuff make sense. Like, like if you don't understand what I'm about to tell you, you'll still understand the encryption part, but it'll always be like the, that, that lingering like, well, but wait a sec. So, so I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put this to bed right now, right? What is that signature? Well, it's a good question. All of the web clients in the world, I just mentioned, know who these guys are. Okay, well, okay, well, how, how, how do they know who those guys are? Okay, let me, let me fill in that puzzle piece. All of the web clients of the world, like if I, if I were to open, let, let me write down here so I have some room. If I were to open Microsoft Edge and dig a little bit, I would see, for instance, VeriSign, and I would see a little key that it's maintaining for VeriSign. Microsoft Edge comes built in with the key the public key to VeriSign. It has the public key, for instance, to GoDaddy. That's another one that, that probably has a little more name recognition because of their marketing, right? Um, it, and it has the public key. These are all the public keys. It's all half of the formula. Remember, remember, half the formula. The public key can encrypt and it can decrypt. But in the, in the, in the case that we, oh man, I just, I just confused everything. Hang on, let me, let me explain. Anything that you encrypt with the public key can only be decrypted with the private key, right? But one thing I don't think I mentioned that is very important for that signature, anything that's encrypted with the private key can be decrypted by the public. It's that, you know, yin yang sort of thing, right? So, so what we were talking about just a moment ago is we were sending half of an encryption formula so it could encrypt the session key, right? And send it over here. Well, all of, all of the web browsers of the world, okay, hang on, get, let your brain catch up. All the web, web browsers of the world have the public keys of all these trusted CAs. So, so when this guy sends the certificate, that signature is actually encrypted. It's encrypted with the private key of the CA. Now, I wanna make sure you catch that. I'm not saying this certificate gives you the private key. I'm saying that VeriSign used their private key, which nobody in the world has, and I, their business would be ruined if somebody got it. But it, it, it has the private key at VeriSign, and they use that to sign the certificate. So when it comes over here, it looks at its list of CAs and it goes, oh, okay, VeriSign, I've got their public key. Can I decrypt that encrypted signature with it and see, oh, okay, it's VeriSign. It's right. This is a genuine certificate. Oh man, that's heavy. That is heavy. So, so if you were hanging on by a thread with, with what I was just telling you with the session key and all that kind of stuff, Go back, watch that again, then come back. The, the more you let it soak in and you start realizing that asymmetric encryption is that two-way thing. Anything encrypted with the public can be decrypted with the private. Anything encrypted with the private can be decrypted by the public. That two-way yin-yang state is how certificate security works and how those signatures are validated. It's that simple.